Westinghouse Summer Theater. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. You can be sure. Whether it's a jet engine or the world's most automatic washer. You can be sure. Whether it's a giant generator or one of America's largest dams. The only frost-free refrigerator or America's finest television set. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. For your home, for your business, for your farm or factory. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Oh, Westinghouse. So sorry. Hmm. Well, here we are, six six, and still hovering around Teddington Station. Teddington. Yeah, the whole evening shot to pieces. If the six three doesn't pull out till six six. Oh, well, the night may have sitting there, but you have to wait. Till... See, I'm so sorry. They're engaging engineers these days who can't even work the blooming machines. Yeah, we'll have to make do, I suppose. Can't say I relish the idea of riding backwards. Oh, well, only a short trip to London. Yeah, uh, most annoying. I say, she's got a blooming birdcage with her. And I saw it. I uh, shouldn't be surprised if there was some rule about transporting livestock in these carriages. Half a mind to write to the Times about it. <laughs> uh, What's that, old boy? And then. Oh. Yeah, what have you got there? Oh, just a. Liver pill. Mm. Well, a bastard liver pill. Such mm. a description. Been coming on all day. Yeah, now you mention it, you're not looking altogether the thing, you know. Oh. Dare say your meals are disagreeing oh. with you, eh? Couldn't be that. I'm on a diet. You'll follow the health column in oh. the car all the time. Brown bread and all that sort of thing, I you know. Do. No, chill on the liver that I put it down to. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> is life worth living? Depends on the liver. Huh? Living liver. Eh? Oh, I see. You're very funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, upon my word, it's disgraceful. Mm -hmm. What we pay the police for, I'm sure I don't know. Uh. Nearly a month now, and they don't seem to be able to lay hands on the woman. Uh, what woman, Rose? Why, this Mrs. Andrews, this poisoning woman who has been flitting around Clodmouth doing people in. Oh, dreadful, dreadful, yeah. yeah now, here's this mysterious woman living in Clodmouth with her old father. He dies suddenly. Yeah. Leaves her a bit of money, too. Oh, really? Mm. Then she becomes cook to an elderly gentleman, and he dies suddenly. Then there's this husband and wife. The man dies, the woman taken very ill with arsenic poison. Cook runs away. Can the police find her? <laughs> they cannot. Oh, dreadful. Ethel, my wife saw a photograph of her in the paper about a month ago. Uh, Ethel says this uh, Andrew's woman looks harmless enough. Oh, no, and bad mouth. Remember oh? distinctly, droopy at the edges. Mm. Wouldn't trust her an inch. Why, I'm willing to bet you that when they dig up the woman's father and the other old bird, they'll find them bung full of arsenic. What? Bung full. 
But the dreadful way is, thing is the way they're writing it up in the papers, you know. Yeah. Oh, very distressing. Ethel was most upset, really physically upset, yeah. just reading about the case in the papers. Yeah, enough to make an able-bodied woman ill, let alone oh. uh, one who has been ill. Uh, uh, by the way, how is the missus? Oh, oh, she's much better, you know. Oh, glad yeah. to hear that. Your beastly things, yeah. nervous breakdown. Tell her to go slowly. Yeah. We don't want her to get sick again, you know. Oh. Leader for the dramatic society. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, by Jove, I shan't forget the way she acted in the last of Mrs. Cheney last yeah. year. She and young Welbeck positively brought down the house. Yes, they? they did indeed, yeah. yes. The, the, the Welbecks were most considerate to Ethel during her illness, you mm -hmm. know. Well, young Welbeck and his mother keep calling all the time. Yeah. And now that we have this Mrs. Sutton to help Ethel, why... Uh, Mrs. Sutton, eh? Yes. Who's she? Our new cook, Ethel Farr, had about almost a month now. Uh, anyway. I suppose you look closely into her antecedents, eh? Well, I expect Ethel made the usual inquiries, you know. Re references, references, and all that going. Mm. Why do you ask? Well, you can't be too careful about a cook, you know. Brooks, what a horrible idea. Well, I don't want to alarm you, old boy, but as I said, you can't be too careful. Oh, why do you not? I dare say this Mrs. Mutton is as... Uh, Sutton, I was. Uh, Sutton, Sutton, yeah. yeah, yeah. I dare say she's a bona fide cook and all that still. Nearly a month now, and they don't seem to be able to lay hands on the woman. All they say is they think she's lurking about Clodmel somewhere and may seek a situation as a cook. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's preposterous, though, because, I mean, Ethel would never engage on him without looking uh, into, into their references. Well, any doubt about them. I or... dare say you're right. Uh. Still, wouldn't do any harm to have a chat with Ethel about it. Find out exactly how much she knows about this woman. Oh, no, I, I couldn't do that upset her dreadfully. Well, do as you think best, of course. Perhaps you could nose around a bit without the missus knowing, eh? No. I can't do that. It is, no, I can't bring it up. Either. Well, better safe than sorry is what I always say. Shouldn't want to be sending wreaths to your funeral yet a while, you know. Oh, Brooks, you're pulling my leg, eh? yeah. aren't you? Aren't you, eh? Aren't you? Why, you've only got to look at the woman. You see, she's incapable, utterly incapable of... I just walked from the station, you see. Oh, I expect the exercise is just what you need, yeah. sir. Oh, a bit of flowers for Mrs. Mamarita. Yes. How is Mrs. Mamarita? Is she all right? Oh, she's in the parlor. Oh. I just made a cup of tea, which I expect you'll be joining her yeah. at. Turned up the dining room today, she did, oh, sir. Did she? Hope she didn't overdo. Exactly what I said to her, Miss Elson. Now, don't you overdo it, Mama said. Oh, but you know how she is, sir. Uh, she can't bear doing nothing. Uh, well, as long as it didn't upset her, I'll... Uh, 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 oh, oh, see oh, 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 wait a minute. You forgot uh, your flowers, sir. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, by the way, Mrs. Sutton, what are we having for dinner tonight? Well, I had made a nice kidney pie, sir. Oh, pastry, I well, don't You'll know. find it ever so light. It's made with butter, sir. Uh, you haven't said you found the lard indigestible. Yes, well, I haven't been feeling exactly right lately. Uh, uh, I shouldn't wonder if you had a chill on the liver, sir. Yeah? Yes. Well, I'll go and see Mrs. Mama. Uh, will you be wanting the pleasure, sir? Huh? Oh. There's that dreadful woman again. What's that? That dreadful Mrs. Andrews, the poisoning woman. Oh. You well, can't glance at a paper nowadays without seeing her picture everywhere. Is there a picture in there? Not in this one, sir, but there's an article about her like there is every day now. Uh, it almost makes a person afraid to put a bite in the mouth, and yeah, that's no mistake. Does indeed. Yes, the, 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 they say she may be working somewhere as a cook, you know, sir. Yes, they say she's but, staying around yeah. Godmouth. But, but suppose she got herself a job at the butcher or the baker or the greengrocer. Oh. There she'd be slipping arsenic into all the purchases. What a horrible idea. It's enough to make a person stop eating, and that's nowhere, sir. Oh. 
And if it wasn't for the pains I take, yeah. looking at everything close before I buys it and tasting it real what? careful before I cooks it. Well, no telling what might happen, sir. I, I, is that what you do, Mrs. Sutton? You taste oh, the food no, before you... Oh, sir, uh, with your delicate stomach and Mrs. Mumley in her condition, do you think I'd take any chances? Uh, I read in a book that arsenic has a queer taste to it. Uh, Sharp and sort of metallic-like. Uh, so I takes ever so small a sup of everything. Uh, just to make certain, I'm sir. sure it's very thoughtful of you, Mrs. Sutton, yes. I'm sure. Mrs. Mummy and I are very grateful to you. Yes. Silly ass Brooks. Beg pardon, sir? Uh, oh, I didn't say anything. Tea will be ready in a minute, Hello, darling. Oh. Been napping? Hello, you back? Yeah. What's that you got there? Uh, the present for my lammy, that's what I've got there, see? Oh, Harold, aren't they beautiful? Uh, All for me. All for you. Now, don't I deserve something for that one? Mrs. Sutton's making a kidney pie. I know that's not what I meant. No, I meant, I meant something special, you know. <sighs> All right. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I suppose Mrs. Sutton were to come in. Oh, blast Mrs. Sutton. Now, 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 mustn't blast Mrs. Sutton that way. I don't know what we'd do without her. Well, I didn't mean it literally, of course. Better not. Why, do you know what she did today? She tidied up the garden and cleared out your potting shed. Oh, she... Put everything on the shelves in the whole backyard as neat as you please. She did, eh? Hmm. She hasn't done anything to displease you, has she? Oh, no, no, no. I cautioned her about your stomach, and she's ever so careful with the cooking. Oh, I know quite good, too. Then what's the trouble? Nothing you don't dislike her, do you? Oh, no, no, no. You don't want to let her go, do you? No, dear, oh, no. Oh, Harold, I don't I do without her. I really can't imagine how I ever got along before. Oh, no. Why, only the other day, she... Yes, but I, I had no intention of, uh, of, of suggesting letting her go. No intention whatever. None. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh, uh, Harold, the, the Welbeck stopped by this afternoon. Oh? Tommy and his mother. Yes? They've been ever so kind, and uh, Tommy says the Dramatic Society is awfully anxious to have me back again uh -huh. with them. I'll be well enough for that, won't I, Dramatic Harold? Society, eh? Oh, Brooks never forgets, never misses mentioning how wonderful you and young Welbeck were in the last of Mrs. Cheney mm -hmm. last year. <laughs> My little star. Tommy's awfully anxious to have me back again. Well, I think you'd like to be back in the sw swing of things, last yourself. Must be pretty tedious, lying here all day long with nobody to visit you except the Welbecks. Mm -hmm. Just a bit. Yes. Uh, oh. oh, well, here we are, sir. A nice hot cup of tea for both of you. Yes, very thoughtful of you. And, and if I may be so bold, Mr. Mummery. Yeah. Yes, be so, by all means, Mrs. Sutton. I see that Mrs. Mummery has a spot of tea. She didn't eat a drop of lunch, and if you're asking me, that's why she come over all thanks to Nedeke. Oh, heavens, Emmy. Mrs. Sutton, do oh, you... she requested me not to tell you, sir, so as not to worry you unduly. It all comes from not eating proper, and that's oh. a fact. A never so nice lunch I fixed for her. Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry, Mrs. Sutton. I tried to eat, really, I did, but somehow nothing seemed to taste right to me. Well, I'm sorry to hear you say that, Mum. I'd done my best. Oh, I'm sure you did, Mrs. Sutton. I dare say I was overtired or something. Everything had a queer, metallic-like taste about it. Ethel, let me. Oh, uh, uh, I, I'm sure you must be imagining things, Mum. Why, I ate it myself. You, you did? Every last mouthful, sir. And if I do say so myself, the eggs had a lovely taste to them. You mustn't think I'm maligning your cooking, Mrs. Sutton. I dare say I just wasn't up to it. Well, no offense, ma'am. When the inside juices ain't acting proper, as if you'll excuse the impertinence, sir, seems to be happening in Mrs. Mummery's case. Food is apt to taste a bit queer. If you ring, sir, I'll come and clear. Thank you, Mrs. Sutton. Will you pass the tea, Harold? What else, tea? 
Oh, oh we hear this call. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, darling, call me Mrs. Sutton. Well, our references are all fucked in oil and everything. Oh, Harold, you're not going to start that again. Oh, dear, I'm sorry. You don't like her, do you? You want to discharge her. No, I don't want to discharge her. And she's been such a help to me. Oh, darling, I'm perfectly satisfied with Mrs. Sutton. Perfectly satisfied. Hmm. Then, uh, may I have my tea, Harold? Oh, uh, your tea? Oh, of course, dear. I... Oh, here he is. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've seen part one of Mr. Mummery's suspicion, Let's turn to our Westinghouse program and Betty Furness. Beware of frost. Handle with care. Say, that sounds like trouble. Of course. It's a lot of trouble when you have to defrost one of those old-fashioned non-automatic refrigerators. You have to use hot water and take out the frozen foods and... Hey, wait a minute. Don't forget to empty the drip tray. There. That's better. But she could get rid of that nuisance once and for all with this wonderful Westinghouse frost-free refrigerator. The refrigerator that defrosts itself and always keeps itself frost-free. Of course, you won't find a drip tray in the Westinghouse frost-free. There is none because the defrost water auto automatically evaporates. It simply vanishes, just like that. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering about those other refrigerators that claim to be automatic and claim no defrosting. Well, some of them have a clock, and that clock turns off the refrigerator, and then when the refrigerator gets warm enough, the frost melts. Then there are some that have a heating coil like this, right here, under the freeze chest, and they melt the frost by heating up the coil. But while all of this is going on, aren't your frozen foods melting too? Well, of course they are. Well, you just will find that that can never happen with the Westinghouse Frost Free, and the reason for that is the magic counter button. When you go shopping for a refrigerator, be sure that you look for this magic counter button. It's the sign of the Frost Free system, and only Westinghouse has it. You see, the minute the frost begins to build up in the freeze chest, this button gives a signal. The Frost Free system goes to work, and every tiny bit of frost that has gathered just is wiped away immediately. There's just no other refrigerator like the Frost Free. Of course, a lot of other refrigerators try to imitate it. But the Westinghouse is the only one that has been tested and proven for 10 long years in all parts of the country in kitchens just like yours. I'm sure when you see the Westinghouse Frost Free that you're going to be convinced that it's the very best refrigerator that you can buy. So tomorrow, go to your Westinghouse dealer and have him show you the Frost Free. And remember, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Oh, by the way, if you already own a Westinghouse Frost Free, ask your Westinghouse dealer about the Weekend at the Waldorf contest open only to Frost Free owners. First thing tomorrow, go to your Westinghouse dealer. And if you don't already own a Frost Free, be sure to get one. Return to Westinghouse Summer Theater and Mr. Mummery's suspicion. Did you follow? Did you ah, hello, Mummery. Oh, hello, folks. Uh, beastly, eh? Yes, I'm suddenly raw. Uh, I see we're in for a bit of a frost. Got all your bulbs in yet? Oh, no, I haven't, as a matter of fact. Oh. Over there's a little trouble. Oh, pity, great pity. Yeah, well, maybe I can get him in next Sunday. Yeah, perhaps I'll go over and give you a hand, eh? Oh, well, I'd be delighted. Uh, you see, now that Ethel's better and 
uh, my little bit of trouble is on the end. Uh, still a bit liverish, eh? Well, yes, a little bit, about well, three weeks. Oh, well, uh, ought to consult a doctor, maybe. Oh, he's not serious enough. These liver pills, you know, they seem to do the trick. Uh, well, suit yourself, of course. Uh, by the way, mm. what did you discover about this Mrs. Sutton individual? Oh, I'm delighted to tell you that your suspicions were completely unfounded. Completely. Is that so? Yes. I'm delighted to hear yeah. it. I shouldn't want to have that poisoning woman hanging around my house, fiddling around with the food. Bound to disagree with you. Uh, suppose that you've noticed how my prediction of a week ago has been borne out, eh? What was that? Well, if you'll recall, old boy, I hazarded the prophecy that when the woman's father and former employer were dug up, they'd be found to be bung full of arsenic. Yeah. Well, here we are. They've been dug up. And were they? Bung full. The fellow must have suffered agony before he finally killed him. And the police unable to do a thing. Disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. Why, can you imagine, Mummery? She's probably been engaged as a cook by some unsuspecting household and is gradually poisoning the lot of them. I say, what's the matter with you? Oh, I know. This talk of poison and liver sort of... You know, mm. made me come all over odd. Mm. Oh, but it's preposterous. I'm, 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 I'm quite sure that Ethel looked into her uh, things uh, quite thoroughly. Yeah. Well, did you ask her? Well, no. As oh, a matter of fact, my dear fellow. Well, I, I, when I brought the subject up, she had almost had a fit. You know, and I, I didn't feel justified in, in, in distressing her to that extent simply on the basis of a notion of yours. Wild notion, yeah. eh? Oh, very well. Oh. Strike is a bit strange, old boy, suddenly getting these attacks. Oh, he's had a weak stomach for years, you know that. What, that bad, eh? Well, it's been a little bit more severe lately. Oh, well, a bit coincidental, what? It's about three weeks since that Mrs. Andrews disappeared. Still, as you say, <laughs> mustn't upset the missus. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Brooks. Yeah? Can you recall that photograph you saw in the papers about a month ago? Oh, miserable picture. Newspaper photograph. Never can tell a thing from them. Still an all. Might give you a hint. Well, it was about a month ago, you know. Well, you've got old newspapers lying around the house, haven't you? Oh, I expect me to suddenly throw them all away by now. Well, so I should imagine. Hardly the thing to keep incriminating evidence lying around the place. Oh, I... All right, all right. I'll, I'll look up some of the see if the old papers are around. And just to get to bring an end to the whole thing. I mean, I don't expect for one minute to find anything. Ah, quite. I understand. Not for one minute. Uh, well, Mummery, better safe than sorry is what I always say. in Mr. Mamre's hot chocolate, Mum. Thank you, Mrs. Sutton. Just put them on the table. And you may clear the coffee things. Yes, Mum. And did Mr. Mamre find the dinner to his liking tonight, Mum? I found it quite delicious, Mrs. Sutton. I'm sure Mr. Mamre was satisfied. Well, heaven knows I does me best. And I want you to know, Mum, that come what may, I want it understood. I done me best. Just a moment, Mrs. Sutton. You sound as though something were wrong. Suppose you tell me whatever it is that's troubling you. Well, ma'am, it's sorry I'll be if the words cause your undue unpleasantness, but... Mr. Mummery. Yes, Mrs. Sutton? That's all I have to say, ma'am, Mr. Mummery. Yes, 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 Mr. Mummery. Do come to the point, Mrs. Sutton. Well, ma'am, for the last several mornings, he's been coming down to the kitchen and staring over my shoulder while I'm cooking. Mr. Mummery, huh? Mr. Mummery, ma'am. And he's poking his finger into everything I do, and, and he's out there in the kitchen now. Whatever is he doing there? Oh, rummaging, Mum. Rummaging? Oh, rummaging. He's out there rummaging amongst the old papers that I keep in the closet for various purposes. I don't understand why, Mr. Mummery. Oh, you go on up, Mrs. Sutton. I'll speak to Mr. Mummery right now. I'm sure you misunderstood his actions. Well, Mum, I may not be overly bright, but it's hard to misunderstand or rummaging. And or rummaging is what Mr. Mum Mummery is doing now is or rummaging. Whatever are 
are you doing, Harold? Hello, Twinkle. What am I doing? Yes, what are you looking for in those papers? Oh, well, I was sort of looking for an old, uh, old article. Uh, what sort of article? Well, something I saw in the papers a week or two ago, uh, concerning, um, <laughs> Oh, it's concerning a new method for laying in tulip bulbs. Uh, Harold, do you have to do that in the kitchen? Well, there's papers in the kitchen, dear. Couldn't you take them into the parlor and look for your article there? Oh, no. I, well, I guess I suppose I could. Definitely yeah. most upsetting yeah. to Mrs. Sutton. Oh. And why do you stare over her shoulder while she's cooking? Oh, well, as far as that's Mrs. concerned... Mrs. Sutton feels you're dissatisfied <coughs> with her. You're not, are you? No, dear, no. Because she's very sensitive and she's quite likely to give notice. Oh. And that mustn't happen, Harold. It really mustn't. Oh, I simply not. couldn't go through the turmoil of engaging a new cook. No, not now. Not, dear. Whatever is the matter with you, Harold, for the last few days you've been acting most peculiarly. Well, Nothing, dear. Is really. something bothering you, Harold? Is it your stomach? Oh, my stomach is in pretty good shape, and I put it down to the hot chocolate, you know. She, by the way, she left me some out for tonight. Yes, she ah. has. And may I remind you that the hot chocolate was her idea, and that she does her best? Yes, dear, of course. Uh. Oh, I simply can't understand what's come over you. Here's this perfectly marvelous cook come to us with brilliant references. Oh, wait a moment, you dear. Did you say Mrs. Sutton brought references with her? Well, of course she did. Do you think I'd engage a cook without them? Well, you never mentioned them before. I hardly thought it necessary. What? Oh, I'm awfully sorry. Sorry? Yes. Sorry about what? Oh, sorry to upset you, darling. It's all my fault. I shouldn't have listened to that old ass Brooks, you know. Brooks? What has Mr. Brooks got to do with this? Well, i better tell you, Twinkle Toes. Brooks sort of got the wind up about Mrs. Sutton. Mrs. Yes. Sutton? Mrs. Sutton? You'll oh. make me sick oh. all over again. Oh, dear. The first time I've been able to breathe in six months was when Mrs. Sutton came. You oh, know that, Sutton. No. You know the way everything was, the way everything seemed to be closing in on me, stifling me, suffocating yeah, me, sir. trying to run this house and not being able to keep servants and all. Oh, now, Donnie, you mustn't must upset yourself. You really mustn't. I must do that all day long. And then all that time lying in bed, people coming to see me and bringing me flowers and all. And I could imagine what they were saying to themselves. Oh. Poor Ethel Mummer. Ten years of marriage and look at her. Ethel, please. And doctors and diets and lying in bed all day with the blinds drawn and not being able to cope with anything. And it'll still be like that if it weren't for Mrs. Sutton. And now you want to get rid of her. There, 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 darling. <laughs> she went for Lord Clubberless before she came to us. She'd still be with him, except he had to go abroad for his gout. She wouldn't travel. No, 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 no. If she was good enough for Lord Cleverly, she ought to be good enough for you. Oh, darling, it's all my fault. Now, we won't say another word about it, eh? I'm sorry. Yes. I didn't mean to fly off that way. I think you're tired, dear, and I think you ought to go to bed. And I'll be up in a few minutes. I'm afraid I'm not quite recovered yet. Oh, nonsense. You're right as rain. You're just tired, that's all. Perhaps you're right. It was just the thought of having to go through it all again, engaging a new cook and all. Why, darling, you don't have to engage anybody. It is suddenly just fine, fine. Oh. There. Now, you run along to bed. I'll be up, tuck you in. Yes. I'm sorry I made a scene like that. I, I'm afraid I'm an awful lot of trouble to you. Trouble? My little lammy, trouble and they're taking care of her? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, indeed. I'll tell you what, though. You need some fresh air. You're looking quite pale. Now, uh, Brooks is coming on Sunday to help me lay in the bulbs, you know? And if it's a fine day, you shall bundle up nice and warm and sit out in the garden and watch us. Now, how's that? That'll be lovely. Yeah. Oh, I think the Welbecks are coming to tea on Sunday, too. Are they? The Welbecks? Well, we're having quite a do, aren't we? Well, <laughs> yeah. Now, you run along on the bed. Nighty-night. Nighty-night. Nice. Oh, you won't distress Mrs. Sutton anymore now, will you? Distress her, darling. From now on, the kitchen is her palace. I won't even enter without asking her permission. Good. Right. Your hot chocolate is in the parlor. We yes. must take care of you now, mustn't we? Yes, indeed, yes. Good night. <laughs> no. Oh.
Operator. Operator, I want clock with 1414, and please hurry. Goodness, Mum, whatever is going oh, on? Mr. Mummer is dreadfully ill, Mrs. Sutton. Who is he now? It's his stomach again, but much worse. He seems to be in dreadful pain. It's a regular tragedy having a stomach about it. It was a stomach that carried off my father, and him suffering terrible agonies up until the last. Why doesn't he answer? Well, it's five and twenty past two, Mum. Oh, I know it is. Dr. Griffiths, this is Ethel Mummery. Could you come over right away, please? It's Mr. Mummery. He's having a seizure. Yes, his stomach. You will? Thank you so much. He seems to be in extreme pain. Yes. Yes, I'll see to it immediately. Thank you, Doctor. Mrs. Sutton, will you boil some water right away, please? Uh, yes, Mum. Why the good Lord give us a stomach is a mystery to me enormous time. Harold, you shouldn't have left your room. I couldn't stay any longer, darling, alone. I, pain got worse and worse. Oh, my dear. Well, come and lie down on the sofa then. Yes. There. There. Oh, oh. I'll just run upstairs and get the hot water bottle. Oh, wait a minute, Ethel, dear. I want to ask you something. This, this attack... There, now, there, now. We mustn't get excited. No, but... Why, why do you suppose... Something disagreed with you, dear. Oh, it couldn't have been the hot chocolate. Oh, oh, oh dear. Very bad, Harold. Oh, pretty bad every now and then, yes. Oh. I, I'm boiling the water, ma'am. Thank you, Mrs. Sutton. I'm sorry to see you're unwell, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Sutton. Uh, perhaps something you ate disagreed with you. Well, the women knows I does me best. Uh, nothing to do with you, Mrs. Sutton, I'm sure. Naturally, I can't assume responsibility for what you choose to eat when you're in the city, sir. Now, now, Mrs. Sutton, it's not your fault. Mr. Mummery has a weak stomach, that's all. Yes, ma'am. Ethel, there's something I must tell you. I don't no, think you should no. try and talk now, dear. It's important, yes, about Mrs. Mummery. I... Yes, Dr. Griffiths. No, Ethel, now, you just Ethel, stay quiet, Ethel, Harold, and Dr. Griffiths will have Ethel, the right as rain in no time. a moment and look at our program again. Excitement in the kitchen. Say, let's see the excitement. All right, just you come along with me and I'll show it to you. There. It's the new Westinghouse Rancho Electric Range, especially designed for the modern young housewife or for any woman with young ideas. Just look at those exciting lines. The Westinghouse Rancho range fits in perfectly in those modern kitchens where every inch of space counts. But in spite of its compactness, it has all the features that you expect to find in a big range. In fact, even more. Let me show you. It has these fast heating surface units, and each unit has five different heats, all accurately measured for everything you cook. Now, let's have a look at the oven. There. Just try that for size. Here on the bottom rack is a large ham. And then on the upper rack, there's a casserole of vegetables, sweet potatoes with marshmallows, and crispy apple brown betty. High, wide, and handsome, I call it. What's more, this is a Westinghouse True Temp Oven. That means that it gives you heat that's perfectly balanced and controlled so that your food is evenly cooked always. Now come on down here and have a look at this Easy Glide storage drawer. Just see how many pots and pans you can fit in there. And if you're the kind of cook who likes to sit down on the job, you can get one of these convenient stools at your Westinghouse dealer. This stool was especially designed to fit right into this tuck-away space. Of course, you could keep waste baskets or bottles or lots of other things in there, too. Did you ever see anything so convenient? The fact is, you have never seen a range with so many exclusive features. And here's one of the very best features of all, the price. It's just $179.95. That's right, that's all. 
So if you want the newest and most modern design in your electric range, and you want all the features of a big range, but in the least possible space, go to your Westinghouse dealer and ask to see the Rancho. There's just no other range like it on the market. Remember, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. We return to Westinghouse Summer Theater and Mr. Mummery's suspicion. Sorry to keep you waiting, Brooks. Yeah, not at all, not at all. Just been having a look around. Yeah. Haven't got any of your bulbs in yet. No, I right? wasn't able to, a boy. I hmm. had rather a frightening attack three nights ago. Hmm. I just got over it. Oh, liver, I suppose. Hmm. Came on all of a sudden. Pity. Delayed you getting your bulbs in, yeah. too, eh? Shouldn't be surprised if you've waited too long. Oh, I hope not. I'll go and get the bulbs. Well, we shall do our best, of course. Uh, hand over the trowel, old boy. Uh, here you are. Hey. Must confess, you're not overcome with weeds. Uh, how do you manage it? Oh, it's about a weed killer. I never could find a decent weed killer myself. What do you use? Why, nothing special. I don't even remember the name. There's a tin of it around here. Oh, here it is, yes. Oh, this, eh? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, it does the trick, as you can see. Good Lord. What's the matter? Winning you just arsenical weed what? killer. The very stuff that poisoning Mrs. Andrews used on her last victim. For sake. Yeah. When did you use this stuff last? Oh, not since last spring. Not since last spring? Oh. What's it doing hanging around without a lid? Well, without a lid, eh? Yeah, there's the lid there. Now, how could I have left it like that? Huh? Yeah, you left it off, eh? Well, nobody else comes out here, you know, mm. except me. I won't get that off in a hurry. Well, nobody else comes out here, eh? Certainly not, no. Yeah, it looks as though the place has been tidied up a bit, quite recently. Yes. Yes, it has. Now, look here, Mummery, you're not fooling me no, one bit. No, no, no please, Have Brooks, you no. gone completely no. crazy? Here, you've got an open tin of arsenic in your potting shed, and you're just over a violent attack in your stomach. Pure coincidence. Coincidence, my foot. You and Ethel are in the clutches of this oh. poisoning Mrs. Andrews. And if you don't do something about it, you'll both be dead. Oh, listen, please, not be quiet. Do you want Ethel to hear you? I want Scotland Yard to hear me. That's what I want. Can't you understand, man? The police have been looking for Mrs. Andrews for the last month, and here she is in your house, cooking your food. If she's not, why, she was employed by Lord Coverley. Well, how do you know that? I asked Ethel. Ethel said she had the most excellent written re le references from Lord Coverley. Mm, well... Easy enough to forge references, you know. Don't, don't say that because Tommy Welbeck and his mother are in there having tea with well, Ethel. Well, I say the thing Tommy. to do is to go and tell Ethel about this Mrs. Sutton person immediately. And have a throw a fit of hysterics? But, my dear chap, she must know about That's this the woman. whole point. I will not allow Ethel to be upset. But look here, if this woman is Mrs. Andrews... She's not. Well, you may be right. Open tin of arsenic, upset stomach and all. Still, it's not conclusive. No, it certainly isn't. Well, I'd like to get hold of a photograph of this Mrs. Andrews and compare it. Then you'd know for sure. Photograph, yeah. mm, There haven't been any pictures for three weeks. Still, you must have some old papers lying around the house, eh? Yes, I have. I, I, I examined them. Did you? Yeah. What did you discover? Oh, no, nothing to prove anything. Let's go and have a spot of tea. Yeah. Oh. And the weather's been so beastly. How have you been getting along, Tommy? Oh, well, just about the same, thanks. Oh, I say, uh, uh, um, Mrs. Mummery, do you suppose you could come to the Drama Society meeting tonight? Well, uh, now, you know, Tommy, Ethel must not go rushing about just yet. Oh, but Dr. Griffith said if I didn't overdo it, I might go out of it. It oh. uh, would be very nice. After being cooped up here so long, I, well, I expect you're a bit bored. Yes, uh, but you both seem so wonderful coming by so frequently when I'm sure it must be out of your way. Oh, not at all. It's a pleasure, my dear, believe me. When one has been confined, as you have, the least a person can do is to inconvenience herself a bit and bring you a taste of outside life. And most welcome, I'm sure. Speaking of which, my dear, I suppose you're following this dreadful poison case. Oh, I'm afraid not, Mrs. Welbeck. I found it too ghastly to read about it. Isn't it? And just think how I feel. You know, I saw her. I saw the poisoner. You saw Mrs. Andrews? I did indeed. But how dreadful. Why, Mr. Mummery and Miss Brooks. 
Good afternoon, Mrs. Welbeck. Tommy. How, How do you do, do Mrs. Welbeck? But Tommy. Do sit down, Mr. Brooks. You're Thank just you. in time. Yeah. Mrs. Welbeck was just talking about the... about arsenical poisoning, Mr. Mummery. Arsenical poisoning. Particularly as carried on by this Mrs. Andrews. You know, they say that all three of those people were stuffed with enough arsenic to kill the whole of Todmas and some to spare. Oh, imagine the agony, the, the agony they must have gone through. Oh, I say, Mother. Now, don't interrupt, Tommy. It's very rude. And you know, they say that when they found her victims, they were writhing on the floor and screaming like wounded animals. Actually, like wounded animals. Oh. And you say you really knew this woman. You saw her. I most certainly did. What's this, Mrs. Welbeck? You knew Mrs. Andrews? My dear Mr. Brooks, when I think of the... When I think, really, it was simply amazing. My, oh. Did you get to the point where you might have engaged her? I, I, I could have engaged her. My dear, there she was. I went down to the employment agency, and there she was. I almost engaged her. <laughs> but suppose you had. Exactly, my dear, supposing I had. But something happened. I, I'll never know what that prevented my engaging her that day. So, of course, when I arrived the following day, uh, she'd already found another situation. <sighs> but if it had not been for that, I might have hired her. How hot. Well, I say, then you'd recognize her if you saw her again, eh? I'll never forget that face if I live to be a hundred. Why, Mr. Brooks? If I saw her coming through that door now, I'd know who she was. Beg pardon, ma'am, but would you be requiring more tea? I think not, Mrs. Sutton. You may clear. Yes, ma'am. And you know, my dear, even worse than that, at least those three died mercifully, and that pain was at an end. But the woman... The wife of the last man to die, she did not die. She's been in hospital now for over a month. When I think of the torture she must have been experiencing, you know, when the arsenic gets into your system, so I'm given to understand, you suffer from the most intensely violent, bilious attacks imaginable. Thank you, my dear. No more tea for me. And do you know... They say that your stomach is literally torn to ribbons. Literally torn to ribbons. I really don't think I could bear to hear another word about it. No, I'm sure we can't hear any more. I'm sorry, Mrs. Wilbur, but Ethel isn't well, you see. We'd uh, better be going home anyway, Mother. We uh, have to get back early. Yes, dear boy. Get your coat. Yeah, I think I'd better be going as well. See, Mrs. Wilbur, but obviously couldn't have recognized her. Yeah, I quite agree, old boy. Her whole thing was a misunderstanding. Yeah. Still, I keep a tight lid on that arsenic. Dangerous stuff to have about the oh, house, you know. Oh, how I tamped it down. Almost. Yeah, quite right, too. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Mummery. So glad to see you looking up to it again. Good afternoon, Mr. Brooks. So glad you could come. Happy to. Oh, uh, I oh. say, Mummery, uh, tonight's Smith's bachelor dinner. Are you going? I forgot. The old soul Smith asked me about a fortnight ago. Yeah. And what with one thing and another. I... Oh. Darling, do you... Well, I think the change would do you good, Harold. I think you should go. Well, what about you? Won't you be awfully lonely all by well, yourself in the house? Well, as a matter of fact, the Welbecks just asked me to the drama, Mrs. Oh, Martin. I know. And Dr. Griffith said if I was feeling well. And are you? Never better. <laughs> oh. Well, then we'll all have a bit of a fling, though. Yeah. <laughs> Pick you up about seven. Right, oh. Right. Now, if you're not to come to the door, you must go and sit by the fire and make yourself comfortable. My dear, what a charming little piece that is. What is it? Oh, my dear, Ethel, you know, this is dreadful. I can't see a thing without my glasses. Why, that's really quite beautiful, isn't it? Well, come along, Tommy, we must go. Good afternoon, Ethel, dear. Now Good afternoon, Mrs. Welbeck. So dear. nice of you to come. I'll, um, call for you at eight. That will be splendid. Goodbye. Well, everybody's gone. <laughs> I must run along to... Oh, by the way, now, I don't want you to stay out too late tonight. <laughs> I should be home long before you, cavorting about with all those bachelors. <laughs> I'll probably get a bit squiffy tonight. <laughs> you seem very jolly for a change. Yes, well, I'm quite relieved about a number of things. What sort of things? Well, someday, my little twinkle toes, our uh, husband will tell you what an ass he's been. Mm. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, I'll better run and get... Oh, uh, 
Since we're all having a fling, how about letting Mrs. Sutton have the evening off? Aren't she might fancy a cinema or something? Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, Harold. I'll tell her. Yeah, well, I owe her something, you know. Uh, but don't let her forget my hot chocolate, will you? Because I know I like a sip of it when I get in tonight. I'll that. see she remembers, dear. <laughs> I don't, dear. Yeah, darling. Cheerio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 dum da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum Chocolate. I know it's chocolate. Well, I must say it's a bit thick getting me out of bed at midnight to fuss around with a bottle of chocolate. Oh, Tim Thorpe, I, this is a matter of life and death. I told you it. Life and death, eh? Well, let's have a look at it. <clears throat> yeah. Arsenic, you say? Yeah. There don't suppose to be any point in asking your arsenic happen to get into your chocolate if it is uh, arsenic. I can't go into it now. No, I expect not. <clears throat> Doesn't strike me as being a very well-ordered household, however. Place for everything, you know. Arsenic here, oh. chocolate there. Oil of cloves over there. All things in their place. Yeah, well, couldn't you hurry it a little? You can't hurry arsenic, you know. Oh. It takes its time. Uh-huh. Uh, by the by. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I don't suppose there's any good asking you what particular kind of arsenic this is. It would help in the test, oh. you know. Please, Jim Thorpe. I... Yeah. I didn't think so. Well. We'll put it to Marsh's test. See what turns up. A lot easier all round if you knew what kind of arsenic this was. Oh. Made up from all kinds of things, you know. Yeah. Orpiment, realga, arsenolite, arsenopyrite, cobaltite, smaltite, nicolite. Oh. Yeah, that's just to mention a few. Yes, yeah, very, very interesting, I'm sure. Where did this arsenic come from? Oh. It came out of a tin of weed killer. Mm. Arsenopyrite, I should imagine. Yeah. Well, Marsh's test ought to bring us a reaction. Uh, we'll warm it up a little, see what occurs. <clears throat> if you're in such a hurry, you know, you might take a large gulp of this and see if you drop dead. Mm. Oh, really? All right, then you'll have to be patient. Mm. Interesting item, arsenic. Extremely poisonous when you take a pinch too much, yet it exists in small quantity in the human body. Yeah. <laughs> We're living at that now. Very fascinating. Yeah. Useful item, too. Yeah. Gunpowder, shot, all sorts of things. <clears throat> Here, hold on there. And what did you find? Yeah, take a sniff of that. Well, 
What do you smell? Garlic. Precisely. The answer? Arsenic. Arsenic? No doubt about it. Garlic odor when it evolved. <coughs> you know, I shouldn't wonder if there wasn't four or five grains of pure arsenic in that bottle. Heavy dose. Oh, uh, by the way, did you drink any of this? Yeah, I, I've got to hurry. Um, Ethel made me a little... Yeah, but hold on there. What? Don't you think the police ought to know? I can't wait. Ethel may be alone in the house with that horrible woman. I've got to go. Get me the police station, will you, old girl? Yeah, and uh, make it brisk, eh? Oh, oh, I say, I'm, I'm frightfully sorry. Tommy. I, well, I didn't mean to intrude. Well, Vic, what are you doing here? So, Silly, I told you Tommy just brought me back from the drama society. I asked him in for, for a nightcap. Harold, are you sure you're not ill? You're acting in the most peculiar way. I mean, there's something I've got to tell you, and I want you to try to be brave. Harold, what happened? Oh, here she is. Get back. Good. Good evening, Mrs. Sutton. Good evening, sir. Was it a nice time you had at your party? I hope you didn't eat anything which will interfere with your lover. Uh, Mrs. Sutton, there's something uh, I must say that I, I... I know just what you're going to say, sir, and I'm that sorry. I stopped off at the pub after the film, and there was such goings on, I clean forgot the time I did. Did you hear about it, Mum? It's all over the pub. They caught that dreadful woman. That dreadful what? Mrs. Andrews. A uh, girl that spotted her will get a reward. I've been keeping my eyes open for her, carrying around pictures that I cut out of the newspapers of her so that I'd recognize her if I'd seen her. <laughs> Mrs. Sutton. And I'm yeah. that sorry, sir. I stayed so late at the pub, I never got home in time to make your chocolate. Oh, not at all. Oh, Ethel, did you hear the news, darling? They've got that woman, that horrible woman, that Mrs. Andrews. Oh, she never... We don't have anything to worry about anymore, darling. I was so frightened for you. I... I... You... You say you didn't make the chocolate? Mm. You... You didn't, then? Ethel, I... Have you been trying to... Uh, now, whoever can that be at this hour? Well, old Dimthorpe probably telephoned the police station. Mrs. Sutton, would you mind answering the door, please? Yes, sir. Oh, Brooks was right. I never should have left that tin of arsenic around. It was very careless of me. I... Yes, oh. Amy. Why? Now then, what's all this? Betty Furness to talk about your children's eyesight. Well, I'd like you to meet my friend Carol. 
Carol, what grade are you going to be in this fall? Now I'll be in the fourth grade. Good. Carol goes to a school where the classrooms are properly lighted. But if she were like seven million other American children, she'd be covering those pretty brown eyes of hers with these before she got out of elementary school. Because, well, among other things, thousands of classrooms have bad lighting, like this one. Those globe-type lights give only a fifth of the light the children need, and the glare they throw on those dark desktops is a real eye strain. To help develop better school lighting, Westinghouse conducted actual classroom tests with five different lighting systems before it came up with this one. Here's a model of the Westinghouse classroom. It's visually perfect. See how these full-length fluorescent lights give plenty of good light, evenly distributed, and easy on the eyes. The walls and ceiling are painted light colors, too. Today, Westinghouse is helping many communities improve their school lighting. So if your local school board or PTA would like advice on classroom lighting, why don't you write for this free booklet? It's called the ABC Plan for School Lighting. Address your request to Westinghouse, Box 284, Cleveland, Ohio. Westinghouse is glad to give this service as part of its contribution toward better living for us all, so feel perfectly free to call on them. Remember, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. This is Paul Brinson saying goodnight for Westinghouse, makers of more than 40 million products for the American home. All summer long, Westinghouse has brought you the Summer Theater and will be back this month with Studio One. And don't forget the exciting football news. Remember, also starting this month, Westinghouse and only Westinghouse will bring you all the football games televised by the National Collegiate Athletic Association. And now until next week, goodnight. Westinghouse product demonstrations by Betty Furness, Miss Brooks' housecoat by Dorian, furs by Frederica.